Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the Sunyong Taurus, a completely new SUV from Korea that is coming here to Europe. Now you might not be familiar with, well, first of all, the Taurus, and second of all, you might not be familiar with the brand Sunyong. A lot of Europeans aren't familiar with the brand, which is a little bit odd considering the fact that they have been on the European market for decades now with cars like the Tivoli, the Raxton, and the Corando. The past couple of years has been pretty rough for Sangyang, not just here in Europe, but worldwide. Now recently the brand is bought by a big Korean company called KG Mobility, and they're introducing a couple of new models like this Sangyang Taurus. And in this video, I will tell you everything you need to know about this new SUV. I will show you the interior, the exterior, and we're gonna take the car out for a drive. Yet again, I'm reviewing a fairly unknown car from a fairly unknown car manufacturer. However, this time the car manufacturer is not from China, which is a nice change of pace, I suppose. This is the Sangyong Taurus from Korea. And like I said, Sangyong has been on the European market for decades now, pretty much just as long as Hyundai and Kia. However, Hyundai and Kia are now pretty much the best sellers in Europe, but Sangyong has always stayed pretty small in Europe. And that's because they only sold very big SUVs like the Rexton, the Tivoli and the Corando and not small city cars and sedans like Hyundai and Kia. Now last year I reviewed the first electric Sangyong, the electric Corando and if you want to see that video you have to look for the link in the description box here below. This particular car isn't electric or is it? Nope, nope it's not. This is just a regular petrol version. However, Sangyong is going to be introducing a fully electric version in the nearby future. And they buy the batteries actually from BYD, so I'm guessing it's the Blade battery. It has a capacity of 73 kilowatt hours. And according to Sunyong, uh, the Taurus EVX will have an expected range of around 420 to 450 kilometers. And by the way, they're not really sure if they're going to call the car the Sunyong Taurus EVX or the KGM Taurus EVX. Because they're thinking about rebranding the Sunyong name to KG Mobility and then they will abbreviate it to KGN. This car I'm driving right now is the regular petrol version with a 1.5 four-cylinder petrol engine producing 136 uh, horsepower at 280 newton meters of torque. And this car is available with an automatic, like I'm driving right now, or a manual and with four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive, so front-wheel drive. Now the chassis setup is a little bit on the hard side, which I don't mind, it makes the car not fun to drive, but you get a pretty decent driving experience. However, I'm not sure about off-roading this car. I think the chassis setup is way too hard uh, for off-roading. Uh, now, probably not a lot of people are going to off-road this car. However, you can get this car with four-wheel drive and the car looks like an off-roader. So I'm pretty sure some people will buy this car to off-road it now and then. Uh, but I'm not so sure about that. But overall, like I said, the driving experience is pretty pleasant in this car. You get a pretty good view out of the car because of the boxy design. And sound dampening is pretty good as well because the car isn't too noisy. Now let's step outside of the car. All right, let's have a look at the exterior design of the Taurus. Now, probably just like me, this is the first time you're seeing this car. And what are my first impressions? Well, this is a proper Sangyong. Because like I said, Sangyong only makes really tough looking SUVs. And this is a really tough looking SUV. There are almost no curves or round angles on this car. Well, only the wheel arches, I suppose. But everything else on this car is very boxy. This is probably one of the most boxy cars I have seen for a while. Let's start with the front end uh, design. You got one, two, three, four, five, six pillars here, which is only one less than you get on a Jeep. So you can kind of see where they got the inspiration from. On the side, we got the headlights with the daylight running lights running beneath it and going to the side of the car here. And you got this uh, silver looking skid plate that is actually made out of plastic. So no off-roading with this car, or at least be gentle. Uh, you also got the Taurus logo here just above the grill, uh, because the grill is actually a little bit lower. They're not here. These pillars are just made out of plastic and the grill is actually here down below. Then let's have a look at the side profile on the car. You got this tough looking wheel arches with 20 inch light alloy wheels. And the side mirrors have integrated turn signals that also have the blocky design. But the main attraction point on the side of the car is the C-pillar with this aluminium or silver looking elements. 
This kind of reminds me of a Land Rover Defender. And just like on the Defender, you can get like an extra box on the side of the car here. The back end design is also very boxy. Take for example, the tail lights. A couple of things to note here. Again, you got the silver skip plate that is made out of plastic. And it kind of looks that you get some extra storage space here. There's like a little box here, but you can't actually open it. It's just a design feature. Taurus is written out in full here at the back. And what is really, well, pretty weird on this car is the fact that this car looks like it has a fifth door. As you can see, there's a door handle here. So you expect it to open like a door, like on the Land Rover Defender. But if I press a button, you can see this car actually has a regular tailgate. Which is a bit of a weird feature, but I think it's actually kind of cool. Now here in the back, you got 700 liters of storage, which is plenty. And if you fold the back seats down, you got around 1700 liters. So a pretty roomy car. It's also pretty roomy here in the back. That's because this car has this very boxy design. Now I'm 1 meter 80, so not super tall, but definitely not super short. And I have plenty of space here in the back. Uh, both seats are in the same position as how I would use them. And as you can see, I got plenty of room for my knees here. And there's plenty of headroom as well. It's also pretty luxurious back here. You got two LED uh, lights on top and two USB ports down here below. And these are, by the way, the old fashioned USB A ports. No, so not super up to date. You even got heated seats here in the back with two levels. There's a solar blind here as well. And you can even adjust the angle of the seats here in the back as well. You got two cup holders and the fit and finish overall is pretty good. You got this tan leather with some nice finish here on the side bolsters and even some leather here in the door panels as well. However, here on top, it is hard plastic, but at least it has the same color. Here in the front, you do get soft materials on the door panels and you get this soft rubber squishy material on the dashboard, which again has the same color as the rest of the interior. You also got three screens here, a digital gauge cluster right in front of you. And then there's an infotainment system on top here and just below that, you get a climate control panel that is also fully digital, just like in a Land Rover or an Audi or a Jaguar. Now the infotainment system is really easy to operate because there's a lot of physical buttons all around it. But the climate controls are a little bit less easy to control when you're driving because they're all on screen. And I have to say the finish finish here on the dashboard is really good. You can really tell that this is not the first car that Sanyong is making. You can really tell they're making cars for like decades now. It feels like a pretty premium car mainly because of all the leather that you got going on here on the dashboard. But just the overall design of the dashboard just looks premium. You got some mode lighting on the dashboard and also in the door panels. There's even a little Korean flag here on the door panels as well, or like a little symbol of the Korean flag actually. And I have to admit, although I don't like controlling the climate control screen here down below, it does look really modern and pretty sleek. Now prices for the regular Taurus start around 36 and a half thousand euros in Belgium and I believe it's around 3000 euros extra in Germany and it's a bit cheaper in Eastern Europe and prices for the electric Taurus are not out yet. So that's basically everything you need to know about this Taurus from Sanyong. If you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more videos like this in the future don't forget to hit that subscribe button and then I'll see you in the next one.